how to install and service a mini condensate pump. This is a mini condensate pump and I typically see these installed on a mini split like this whenever you can't use a gravity drain. Whenever the water needs to be pumped from this unit up and you can hear a sound right now and that is of the pump that we're going to replace and it's up there above the ceiling. So I'm going to show you how to install this. We're going to talk about maintenance and what's important when you look at these mini condensate pumps as far as maintenance and when I would maintenance this type of pump. You're watching Taddy Digest. I'm Tad. Let's get started. Whenever you have a mini condensate pump, you have something called a reservoir. And that reservoir has a float. And whenever that float, uh, whenever this reservoir gets filled with water, it lifts the float and that's connected to a sensor cable and that connects to the pump. And whenever that float lifts up, then the cable will send a signal right through that sensor cable to the pump and the pump will kick on. So that will pump the water out. But you can see, look, it's not really pumping the water out. So we have an issue. Now I'm going to show you what needs to be maintenance. So take a look at this top of the reservoir, take it off, and there's a filter. You see that filter? At least every six months you need to be taking that filter out and you need to be cleaning that filter and then putting it back inside the reservoir. So now I'm going to show you where the pump is located. So the drain tube from the condensate pan in the indoor Walmart air handler comes into the reservoir. Then this is the outlet port for the reservoir, has a quarter inch tube, goes up into an anti-siphoning device right here and then leaves that device and then goes in to the actual pump. This is the pump and this is the signal cable. Looks like a Cat5 cable, right? Then on the other side, we've got our power for that pump. And then we've got our tube, which exits to the exterior. You gotta make sure there's no kinks. And you wanna make sure you also use some type of anti-vibration, maybe some putty underneath this, maybe some type of rubber. That way you don't have uh, excess vibration or noise because sometimes these pumps can become noisy. Now let's look at the wiring. You hear how loud that pump is? It's not even pumping the water, so we got an issue. Here's our wire for our power for the pump. You can see we got four wires. We've got a black which goes through a one amp fuse and connects to L2. And then we've got our red wire, which goes to L1. So black and red provide 230 volt. And then we've got a gray and a purple wire. And then you can see this was, this uh, blue wire was the communication cable that comes from the outdoor unit and it went to the two terminal. It looks like we got the gray wire going into that wire and then we've got the purple wire going to where this blue wire went. So the gray and the purple are a normally closed switch that will open and it will break the signal to the communication between the outdoor and indoor unit if there's an issue with the pump. So if you ever have an issue with a mini split and it has a condensate pump, then check the condensate pump because that could be where the issue is. We are going to clean this unit. I'm going to show you why. Take a look. Look at that nasty wheel. So we're going to go ahead and clean that wheel, probably clean off the indoor coil. I'm going to show you how we do that and then we're going to replace that pump. And then you'll be able to tell a difference between the sound of the old pump and the new pump. This is a maintenance bag. You can take and slide a maintenance bag over the air handler, and then there's a string. And you can take and pull that string to tighten it up. And then you can take the Velcro pieces so that you've got just a little space here. And then we can spray it off and all of our water will go in the bag and down in the bucket. This will help to reduce the amount of mess that you make in a home. So this will help you from not destroying the wall 
and then you'll be able to efficiently clean the unit. So let's go ahead and get the tank ready and start spraying it off. This is a turbo tank, and this is what we use to be able to come in the home without having to drag in a water hose. So I've also got a 90 degree wand here, and I'm just gonna take and place this inside and go up into where the blower wheel is, and then I'll be able to just take and spray it. And make sure the bag is to where the water will go in it. You can also use the 15 degree nozzle. Now we're going to take a minute to stop and put coil cleaner all over the coil and all over whoops, the wheel. Anytime you get done cleaning a mini split, make sure you use a shot back and suck out the drain, right? Look at this water that we got out. Yucky! Now look at this wheel. That wheel looks a lot better. Now let's look at the contents of the box for the new pump we're going to install. So looks like we got instructions, that's nice. We got the quarter inch ID tube and then we've got a couple pieces of Velcro with sticker backing. That way we can mount the pump and the reservoir. We've got the new reservoir. Probably easier bring it out this way. So new reservoir, new screen. You see how clean that screen is? Uh, looks like we've got an extra uh, tank for the reservoir. We got a new pump, and then it's got an arrow. So you can see the arrows right here. Uh, this is the inlet side. This is the outlet side. Then we've got our plug with our wires for our power and it plugs into the pump like this and then on the other side we got the sensing cable plugs in like this right here we've got a tube for installing to the mini split and then we've got another tube here for a different application and then we've got our inline fuse which you'll want to cut to splice and then we've got an adapter. And then we got some wire ties in here. So let me go ahead and get it installed. Make sure you turn off the power before you replace the pump. Now we're gonna disconnect the wiring. If you're unsure on the voltage or the power to the unit, check with a meter. Make sure you don't have voltage. All right, there's one side of my power and there's the other side now we're going to take gray wire disconnect it and then purple wire and there's the power for the unit or the pump also looks like there's been some damage on the load side of the terminals l1 and l2 looks like they're burnt that's interesting so Pull that wiring through. All right. Disconnect the sensing cable from the pump. Pretty simple. Pull this out. All right, there's the float assembly. Is loose so we just need to disconnect the drain lines quarter inch tube make sure you use quarter inch tube do not use anything larger than quarter inch tube uh oh gotta clean that water up 
There's the pump. Now I'm going to take out the old anti-siphoning device. You can see they've got some wire ties on here. And there it is. There it is. Now we're going to install the reservoir and you can see there's some Velcro here. And we are going to remove this covering best we can. Put it right here on the bottom. And then we're going to take and remove the other layer. Right? Like this. Alright. And then this is going to go up inside. Right? And this will, this is sticky enough that it will hold it to the bottom. Now we're going to take and install our new tube. Right? This is our new quarter inch ID tube. And then we've got our other tube here. I think this looks like 5 8 So 5 8 ID, I'm pretty sure. We slip this over the inlet port of the reservoir. And then we'll want to make sure this stays inside the unit. So we probably cut this right here. And I've got these cutters available to me. So I'm going to use this. Just cut that. Now, make sure this is on the other side. And then the last thing we need is a tube right here. Now install this tube right here. Boop. And then this, is, this part of the install is finished. Take and lift up the unit and set this inside. And then we're going to route this tube back through here to connect to the anti-siphoning device and then this cable will go to the pump. Now I'm installing the new anti-siphoning device so that we don't have any issues. Whoa. The tie just slipped off. There we go. Mm -hmm. That's tight. Now I'll route this cable up into the ceiling. New power for the new pump is wired in and briefly going over that black wire goes through the one amp fuse into one side of the power provided to the pump. Red wire goes to the other so red and black L1 and L2 and then we've got the signal wire and it's going through the normally closed switch so it goes through the purple wire and then it comes back and that gray connects to the terminal for the indoor unit so it breaks the communication from the outdoor to the indoor unit. I've got the pump temporarily right here where you can see it. So whenever we turn it on, you'll see the water going through that pump and then you'll be able to hear the sound. And next step is we're going to pour water in the pan. Breaker back on. Now, if you ever clean a mini split, you want to leave the bag on and turn the unit on cooling that way you have time to remove the water that's residual after cleaning that's on that wheel or maybe inside this vein. We've already done that. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back on cooling. And then we're going to test the pump. As you can see below the unit, walls not ruined, floors not ruined, so we're in good shape. Let's check L1 and L2. Turn your meter on volts AC. Let's see how much voltage is going to L1 and L2. We have 232 volts going to that pump. Now let's fill the pan with water. Now we're going to fill that pan with water. You should hear the pump kick on after the reservoir becomes full. There it goes. You hear it is much quieter. Kicked on for a short minute. Let's fill it up with water again. More water. You hear that pump? Oh, you see the water? It's working. Now I'm going to put it back in its place and we're done. 
you can see how part of the numbers on the display are not showing up. Anytime you have this happen on a mini split, it means your display is going bad and it probably needs to be replaced. So just replace your display. Super simple. Nice and clean. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. If you did learn something, let me know what it was down in the comments. If you need a condensate pump, go check out the link in the description. I've got a link for a mini condensate pump down there. If you learned something in today's video, let me know in the comments what it was. If you got a question, questions can lead to new content. But if you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are and let me know where you're from. If you want to learn more about being an HVAC technician, check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. I've got hundreds of videos of live, real experience as a technician in the field to make you a better technician. You've been watching Taddy Digest. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.